everyone and welcome to a brand new episode of It's Our House podcast with Fazza and Dees. I am Fazza and that handsome man is Dees. How you doing, buddy? Really good, mate. Thank you. It's another beautiful day. Um, I love doing an early podcast so know, much. Yes, yes. We've got to say thank you to our guest yeah. for, for arranging this early start <laughs> that we have. But today we have a YouTuber, a Twitch streamer and an incredible professional wrestler. It's the glamour, Aww. Mariah May. Welcome to Aww. the show. Thanks so much. What an intro. Thanks for having me. <laughs> that, that, that is my only uh, claim to fame. I do really good intros after yeah, that. That's, that's all he does all awesome. week. Just comes up with a good intro. And then just, <laughs> How are you doing so today? Me. I'm good. I'm good. Early start for me too. How are you both? Yes, we're, we're really good. good. We're good. Yeah, really we uh, good. talking about Twitch. We started this week. Uh, oh, we were only on for an hour and a, hour, what, about an hour and a half. We had eight viewers. Mm. Uh, that's good for a first stream. Is it? Oh. Yeah, eight viewers for a first stream. Some people have like just a few or none. Oh, there you go. See, these? Yeah, it's there really you good. Go. It's not bad yeah. at all, is it? How many it's people are in now? It's a shame I was one of them and three of them were <laughs> three of them were our mates Banner as well. But... <laughs> My <counts>. family. <laughs> <laughs> How is the Twitch uh, game going? Yeah, it's really going well for me. Um, like I've been doing it for just under a year now, which is crazy because I started it sort of June time. And it just feels like the whole of lockdown, I've just sort of been doing just Twitch. But it's been nice to kind of have something to focus on. Yeah. And um, like I've built such an amazing community over there. And it's just it's just nice, I think, like the social contact for to be able to have that in lockdown. And I think a lot of people who watch my stream have said that they're like, it's just really nice to have something to look forward to because yeah. they feel like everything is very samey samey. And they're like, you know, at least we get to like hang out and it's really fun. So um yeah, it's going really well. We're building an amazing community, and I, I think the fans are all really enjoying it. So, yeah. Excellent, excellent. We need, we just need to figure out how it works. In it is, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I've, I've Overlays, nine, all that stuff. I've been doing it for nine months, and I still don't know everything. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the majority of that first hour and a half was just you looking up how to do things on your computer, and yeah. me just like... Just away by myself and looking yeah, well, people phone, couldn't like... even hear you, so I had to put the speakers towards the mic yeah. because they couldn't yeah. hear you. They could only hear yeah. me. Anyway, yeah. uh, obviously we got in touch with you because we are predominantly a wrestling podcast. Uh, we, we're following your career very, very closely. Uh, we hope to see, obviously, you improve more and more and more and you know, go into the huge, bigger companies, which we'll address in, in some of our questions. But as we said, we like to start with an icebreaker. So who would your ideal manager be? And why? Ooh. Manager. Oh, that's such a good one. Past or present, living, living or dead. Yep. Oh, okay. Well, I had like an answer straight away in my head, but now I'm wondering. <laughs> you got, my first, my pick, first. Pick whoever instinct, your first one was. Yeah, and then my first instinct is a bit. Of, is a bit. You might think it's a bit strange. It would be Roman Reigns, just because okay. I feel like as a heel team, right? Roman Reigns as your manager you would just get such a reaction and I feel yeah. like it would work really well and it's a bit different because Rem Reigns is obviously a wrestler, not a manager. So just to swap the dynamic, I think would be cool. Yeah. And I bet no one else yeah. has picked Roman Reigns. No, m- m- most no. people That's go with Paul Heyman. Most people go I was going to say, Heyman. I was yeah. like, Paul Heyman, which great, great one, but I wanted to choose something different. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Interesting, yeah. Bit of a weird dynamic that. If you could, what about if, so if he was your first choice, who would you have if you could have anybody? Well, when you said past, history. I was kind of thinking I would bring Trish Stratus back, mm-hmm. have her as my manager, then down the line, turn on her. Then we have our, <laughs> WrestleMania, we have our WrestleMania match. <laughs> that would be my dream. Doesn't get much better than Trish, really, does it? No. <laughs> In terms of women's wrestling. Um, right, okay then. So so keeping, keeping the theme of wrestling... Um, what were your first memories of wrestling growing up? Like, how how and when did you get into it? Who were your favourite wrestlers? Was it just was it something that you just naturally fell into? Or yeah, so I have two older brothers, uh, so we always used to stay up and watch SmackDown was on a Friday night on Sky for us, so it was on at like ten, so we would all stay up and watch it. My mom would let us stay up and watch it; she worked fine. Um, and then I remember, like, I would sneakily try and stay up. Um, to watch Raw because Raw played at like 1am yeah. um, so I would like sneak upstairs and go into my parents room because obviously I didn't have a TV there was a TV downstairs and my parents had a TV so if they were downstairs I would sneak into the, I'd be like, I can't sleep I can't sleep and they'd be like oh, I'll go to sleep in our bed like and leave me upstairs and I'd like sneak on the TV and try and watch Raw <laughs> and if I hear them coming up I would turn it off and be like I was on edge um, but yeah that's kind of my first memories it's just like watching it with my brothers and 
just staying up just to watch it all the time and I think some of my favorites were definitely Jeff Hardy um, but he used to give me so much anxiety because like as a kid when he like climbed up to the top rope I was like no you're gonna lose they're gonna move like I, I can I can deal with it you know when kids are there like yes and they're like no <laughs> get down <laughs> um, and then uh, my, my favorite was definitely Mickey James as well like when she beat Beth Phoenix I actually watched that before school so I would watch Raw before school as well I'd put it on and catch like the first part of it and um I remember when she beat Beth Phoenix I like lost my mind and I went to school and I was like telling everyone and people were like what <laughs> what is wrestling <laughs> I'm, like, but Mick Mickey won she won and they were like okay <laughs> Aye. <laughs> but it's that funny because I'm I'm still friends with someone that I went to primary school with so like when we were like way younger and we're still friends and she messaged me she's like it's so crazy you're a wrestler now because I remember you coming to school and talking about it and we were all like what are you talking about and now you're actually a wrestler so that's brilliant <laughs> for full circle yeah it's just yeah. that sounds quite similar to to our introductions to wrestling as well doesn't it like watching Raw before school uh <laughs> Jeff Hardy was always my favorite wrestler still is all time yeah I think you're quite similar as well aren't you Faz yeah well my first ever introduction was was Kane's debut as I said and that was oh it then I was hooked after that. As soon, as soon as that, you know, I've never seen anything like that before on live television. So it was just like, yeah, I'm in. And, you know, now now I do it as a business. So, yeah, that's what hooked me to Jeff Hardy. I'd never seen, I'd never seen a man jumping off of giant <laughs> 30 foot tall TV screens before. Jumping off everything. Yeah, oh, I can jump off that. That'll do it as well. Shane McMahon as well. I think it was around that time when yeah. Shane McMahon was jumping off everything as well. It was a crazy time to, to first get into it. Definitely. How easy was it for you to get into wrestling training? Like, is there is there a lot going on around where you grew up? Was it easy to get into a school or? It was actually really tough just because like where I went to school, everyone kind of had like a really laid out path um, in terms of like, you go to uni, you do this, you do this. And for me, like I really struggled with sixth form. I really, like I was really academic and like I, you know, I did really well in my exams, but I was just so miserable because you know, I, I love doing theatre, you know, I obviously really wanted to wrestle. I did a lot of sports and stuff, but I just wasn't really satisfied. Like, I really wanted to wrestle and it just felt impossible and I couldn't find anywhere to train. And it felt like everyone I told was kind of like, yeah, but like, what do you really want to do? Like, what's your, your real, you know, path? What do you really want to do? And then, so when I left school, you know, I, I got a job and I just wanted to get everything set. So then now I could go to my parents and be like, look, I've got a job, like, finished my A-levels, I've got everything sorted, like now can, you know, we try to do something here. And I remember I found a school in London um, and like, I, I remember I was like, oh, can I go here? Can I go here? And my dad was like, what? Cause it was like, in, <laughs> like it was like in like a Brixton in like a garage. So my parents are thinking, what is going on? <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's kind of where it started. Um, and then yeah, it just kind of continued from there. It was kind of difficult to get into. Like I had some bad experiences when I first started uh, and had to sort schools a few times just with like some of other people, but just yeah. that was the tough part was just finding like a safe and happy environment to train in. Um, but I was willing to, you know, travel wherever I just, cause I just wanted to start. I just wanted to wrestle. So when I was finally actually training and training, being able to train every single week, multiple times a week, I was just so happy. And, uh, like my parents would just see me come back so late on like a week and I'd be like, where, have, what, what's going on? And I'm like, I was wrestling. And they're like, <laughs> <"Don't worry." laughs> like you, do, you do you. And like, I mean, it, it was tough to just, uh, to find, you know, a safe space in the right space yeah but once once I did I just put so much into it and was just training so so hard and it, it, it did it's I'm not gonna say it felt easy like obviously wrestling and learning to wrestle was really difficult but it felt right if that makes sense it felt yeah, yeah. like and that's where you were meant fit. to be yeah I just yeah. remember like like I would just sometimes cry on the way home like I'm a very emotional person and like I would just cry on the way home I'm, like, I'm just so happy that like I dreamed about this for so long and now I'm actually like that's moving amazing. forward because like when I was younger, I would be, you know, practicing promos and drawing out my wrestling gear. And like, I'm talking like 16, 17 years old when I say younger, like, I mean like that old, like, you know, trying to get ready as much as possible, but then to actually be in the ring and like taking those steps and thinking about having a debut and thinking about matches and stuff that felt so good because it's like, now I'm actually like physically moving forward with something I dreamed about doing my whole life. So 
Yeah. That's amazing. What was the uh, the first bump that you took where you were like, I don't know if this is for me? <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I actually never really had that. Like when I took a bump, I didn't I didn't think it was that bad. Yeah. The the bit where it kind of feels bad is when you get home <laughs> and you're like, oh, I've never had this before. Um, so I never really had that. I think the only time, and I've never felt like it wasn't for me, but I think the only time I've gotten really worked up was the night before I went to training. I felt sick. Like I tried to make myself go to bed at like 6 p.m., <laughs> which is <laughs> never going to happen. And I'm like laying there like sleep, sleep, sleep. I didn't, I hardly slept. You know, when you just, you, you hardly sleep all night. I think I got about four hours sleep because I was so nervous. I kept, I even like half dreamt about, what training would be like and it all went wrong like that's the that's how anxious i was like i had like i don't even want to call them butterflies like they were like sharks like i was, I was so <laughs> nervous and then um but once i got there and i just got i mean i got there and i was still super nervous but once i like you know you start you start you doing your roles etc etc et it was just like it just felt right you know but i think the only time i've ever felt like ah! It's like before I really went, if that makes sense. Because you're just yeah. saying they're like, okay, this is my whole life's work and this is the only school I can find. This doesn't work out. It's, it's not going to happen for me. But um, yeah. <laughs> um, so what, what I find quite interesting, especially with you being like on the independent scene, um, and we see this a lot more on the indies than we do with, with any other promotions like on TV networks, um, intergender wrestling is... is quite a big part of of the indies and we've seen people like you know candice LeRae is as amazing as she is as a, as a women's wrestler she's really well known for for her intergender stuff as well and we recently sort of saw a little bit on smackdown didn't we with like carmella and reginald and, and those yeah. guys um so we've seen you wrestle and beat plenty plenty of other of male wrestlers um over the last couple of years what are there any other challenges for you as a woman as a, a female wrestler in wrestling men um would you like to see it used more in like the mainstream of wrestling and did it all i guess i guess my main question is like how has it helped you to prepare for being a wrestler like have you learned anything more from wrestling men or anything different from wrestling men so i you know the first school i ever went to i was the only girl and the second school oh i went to i was pretty much the only girl for a very long time and i remember like i would get in the ring and like the guys would be too scared to get in with me and I would be like get in like you know what I mean and I would really like go for it with them because I'm like don't treat me like you know I'm just a girl like I'm bigger than half of you anyway and so <laughs> you know but I, but I trained with guys and I think you know after a couple of weeks they're like oh, okay and you know there was a specific group that were like you know we were friends and they're like yeah okay like you know I'm gonna batter you like it's fine <laughs> so, you know so I, I trained with with men you know for me I, I don't really see too much of a difference uh, some of my favorite matches have actually been with with guys um you know I had a really really fun match with Robbie McKenzie at Mega Slam um and you know the reason I just enjoyed it is because it just felt so solid like it felt like a really big step step up for me because I've had like 40 matches yeah. so I think this is like match I don't know 30 or something but you know everyone's saying like he looks strong like he looks solid like everything looked you know put together but it's because he he was just really really trained really well and he was a great worker and just to be able to wrestle him was awesome uh, like so for me I don't massively see a difference mm -hmm. I enjoy wrestling whoever you know if you want to work hard and you want to you know make something happen like let's do it um mainstream I do understand why you know they don't necessarily do intergender like I do understand why you know WWE and AEW don't necessarily do it um I think the Reggie and Sasha match was fun and I think it was a fun way yeah. to do it in a mainstream capacity um, so I'm not sure I do get it I feel like because of sponsors and things like that you know it's, it's not necessarily going to be something that will happen yeah, um, and the yeah. Sasha and Reggie match was very carefully put together uh, but it was really fun like I really really enjoyed that I really enjoy Reginald I think he's he's brilliant and uh, his <laughs> match with Sasha was was great um, so yeah I mean I definitely want to want to wrestle I just want to wrestle everyone really um, I just want to wrestle people who are going to push me and we're going to we're going to deliver a great match whether it be male or female I don't mind um but yeah i mean i'm open to anything and uh, we'll see how wrestling evolves because it constantly changes and you never know you know with these companies what might happen next because yeah. you said 10 years ago there's not going to be a divas belt it's going to be a women's belt and there's going to be multiple and there's going to be women's women's tag belts and the division's going to be huge you'd be like what yeah so exactly. you never really know 
uh i don't think it will right now but you just never know in the future no it's it's even the the, the uk independence scene is huge at the moment isn't it it's actually yeah. huge in comparison to what yeah. it was a few years ago yeah yeah it's huge and there's like more schools now there's more promotions there's so many more people wrestling so many more girls as well which is cool yeah um so things just continue to grow and uh, i'm really looking forward to wrestling coming back to see uh how the landscape is and to watch it grow Definitely, because I know, like, uh, obviously, you know, you, you might not have, have seen a lot of our shows, but Mr. D is here, is, is the biggest fan of, of women's wrestling. He, he's yep. a huge yep. advocate for it, pushes it literally yep. on his Twitter page like you wouldn't believe. Um, so, obviously, the more that we see young girls getting into this business, the better, and the more we should see positive change across the whole yeah. of, of the company yeah. which is great right. i was i was over the moon when um when we had the the women's triple threat main event at mania yeah. 35 couldn't believe it like proper proper like, wwe always trying to make history aren't they like the first ever this the first ever that the first ever nigerian drum match but um <laughs> yeah that was that was like a, a proper wow moment i never thought i'd see yeah. that no. No, it's, just, no. it's such a shame they haven't done evolution too isn't it at the moment yeah yeah maybe the wait will. for a live crowd yeah, I think they will. Yeah, I'm like do. mixed feelings about Evolution. Like, I'd love to see another one just because I enjoyed Evolution so much. Like, and I, I think a lot of people did, like, all, like top to bottom, the pay-per-view. If you take away, you know, the history thing and the all-women's thing and you just look at it as just like wrestling, yes, it was great. It was yeah. But then you add yeah. in that emotion to it and what it meant it was amazing. But I'm kind of torn because I'm like, I want to see it again. But then I also respect the fact that it could just be that special thing to just commemorate, like, we did all this and we've made it and like we're equal now yeah so yeah you know because then when does it end like because I, I i naya said it and uh i really agreed with it she was like you know i don't want to keep saying first ever like i just want it to be the norm yeah. like i don't want to have yeah. you know you know you have your first ever rumble elimination chamber etc she's like it's just normal now like we are equal we might be the main event you know the men might be the main event tonight like i just want that to be set and i do really agree with that as well Definitely. like you don't you never want to be handed a cookie like you want to earn something so i do see that too but uh aside from he does really want it just because i'd like to see another <laughs> <evolution. laughs> I think we Definitely. all want to see bailey versus lita don't we that's a yes. dream match stuff yes yes know, it's such yes. a shame they didn't do it for wrestlemania madness yeah. looks like madness she's, you know, she's not even on the show i don't get it it's crazy yeah. to me Pretty anyway cool. um We'll move over now to obviously your YouTube and, and, and the Twitch side of things. Um, what do you make of the sudden influx of near enough every wrestler in existence starting up a Twitch or a YouTube <laughs> channel? Uh, has it made it harder for obviously small smaller channels? And what do you make of WWE stopping wrestlers from using third party platforms? So I think it's, it's an awesome thing for wrestlers to do, especially over lockdown and independent wrestlers. Um, I mean, I have other revenue streams, but I know some people were full time with wrestling and that was their only income. So if they've found a way to kind of, you know, create something else for themselves. I, I think that's awesome for them as long as they're, you know, taking it seriously. I think sometimes people just think, oh, yeah, it's really easy. You just open up a laptop. And as we said at the start of the show, like, no, <laughs> like, no. There's so much that goes into <laughs> it. It's all a big learning curve. And, you know, it takes a lot of time and investment and sometimes money just to kind of build your setup and, and get something that works because you are live streaming. So you really need like a sturdy uh, situation. But I think it's awesome. Um, like for me, I started doing YouTube live streams because I just wanted a way to connect with my fans to kind of talk to them. And everyone was saying, like, go over to Twitch. Like it's it's better for live streams there's more fans can do it's more interactive and then i went over to twitch and it just became such a huge thing like before i was like yeah i'll probably i'll probably move to doing it once a week i was doing it quite a lot and i was like i'll probably move to doing it once a week then i got onto twitch and it was like every day <laughs> and now it's like five <laughs> days a week uh, but you know i i really enjoyed it and i know like i said earlier so many people in my community are like you know it, it just it makes me feel better like i've got something to look forward to i feel like i've got some social contact so like that's enough for me and if you know other wrestlers starting it are creating that kind of environment too that's what you want to hear and that's what you want to see and um, with regards to WWE I mean there's a rhyme and a reason for everything and it might just be a case of you know you can't monitor live streams you know with I know a lot of wrestlers have YouTube channels uh, you know you can check that and check it's all okay because you are representing you know a company and there are younger fans you just need to make sure so it might have been a case of they just can't they just can't monitor it because it's live and anything can happen as, as we all know when you're live yeah. like really anything can happen so um you know i respect that decision and we never fully know the facts of anything um but certainly for independent wrestlers i think it's an awesome thing for them to create another revenue stream 
uh, at this level, I think, you know, that's necessary to have multiple outlets like that. And um, if it can build your brand and it can build your following, uh, that's awesome too. So um, it can only be a good thing. Yeah, so as you said, it, it's having that ability to just engage with your fans, isn't it, on a on yeah. a local level when you can't do it personally at the moment. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and obviously we've seen more and more of that in in recent years, haven't we? With like social media as well, people people we watch these wrestlers so much, we want to get to know them a bit more as as real people. And sometimes that can be dangerous, you know, with Very. stands and <laughs> obsessive fans and things like that. But um, but it's nice to just get a glimpse into the real person rather than just. Yeah always a character always a heel always a face I don't know you know it, all you have to do is go and follow the iron sheik on twitter that's all you need it's the <laughs> best twitter, twitter account outstanding best twitter account in the world <laughs> just see his evil fools saying uh, hulk hogan was the best person on the planet <laughs> so did he <laughs> yeah. brilliant i love it's sheik amazing. imagine getting sheik on um right I've, I've, I've got one that i've been i've been wondering about for a little while um Obviously, this is more of a thing on the independence in in on on national TV, and that you do sometimes get <clears throat> Motorhead doing Triple H's entrance and things like that. Obviously, you get you get big name bands. I've been to a million indie shows. Most of the wrestlers have like cheesy songs from the eighties or Britpop from the nineties or whatever. Your entrance theme is Ariana Grande. Now, that's not something I was expecting. <laughs> no tears left to cry. So, why did you? Um, why, why did you choose No Tears Left to Cry, first of all? Um, and how does that song represent you as a person or as a wrestler? Because I know I know for a lot of independent wrestlers, they sort of, they don't just go with their favourite songs. They sort of go with something that's more about them and explains their story. Yeah. Sort of. yeah, so there was a lot of reasons for it. So my, my debut and like the match afterwards, I didn't really pick my song. I came out to The Offspring, who, you know, I love, I love the song but it just wasn't me, you know, I, I'm, you know, I grew up watching the Divas and I work really hard and I thought it would be such a cool dynamic to have that Diva edge to me, but be able to work because I can mm. go, I work so hard, I train so hard and I just think it's just an amazing, I mean, I always get people who kind of look at me and they think, oh, model, so I love to prove them wrong and I know I will <laughs> and so I kind of like this idea of like, why do I have to dilute myself? I mean, a lot of people come out to rock and heavy metal and uh, you know, I, I don't mind listening to that, but it's not me, you know, and your song has to be your character. It has to, people have to get that when you come out and like No Tears After Cry has a really epic intro and then the beat drops and it's like a really upbeat pop song. And like, for me, I just felt like that suits me. It suits my entrance. I dance when I come out. I'm very upbeat. I want to put energy into the crowd. You know, I'm, I'm fun. You know, they kind of see me and they're like, yay, like the kids love it. And uh, for me, that's always what I wanted. I want to come out and I want to get the crowd up. I wanted to kind of have what like, Mickey James used to do and just be full of energy and full of life. And that song felt like the right fit for me in terms of doing that. And also the fact that everyone does come out to, you know, your cheesy 80s or, or your heavy metal. And then I'm coming out to Ariana Grande. Everyone's like, wait, what? <laughs> like, she's different. No one else does, you know? And I always as well, like, I felt like I kind of had to dilute myself and kind of put down some of the reasons I got into wrestling and who I am. I mean, I clearly love pink, as you can, <laughs> as you can see. And, you know, I like I like being sparkly and I like, I like shining. I like all that stuff. And I don't feel like I should have to dull myself down. And, um, you know, I don't feel like, because I'm a, I'm a baby fan, I wrestled a baby face a lot and you know they're like oh, I'll be too heel if you come out in pink and I'm like why like no it won't like you just you have you make it work so you know I I've never ever gotten like booed when I've come out in pink ever so that's not true <laughs> uh, like I've never ever come out and gone yay and people have been like boo <laughs> like you know like I've always gotten like a, oh yay because you know I'm more bright and you know and everyone's always in like black and you know they come out to heavy metal and you, you could just but it's an easy dynamic to tell especially at family shows straight away they know that's the bad guy that's the good guy and and, and it's, it's straightforward so um yeah I mean I wouldn't say it was my favorite song I mean I love Ariana Grande she's my favorite artist but that wasn't particularly my favorite song I just felt like structurally with the epic intro and then jumping into like the upbeat pop it just worked really well because you wait then you come out and then it hits with the pop and you can kind of dance around and really get the crowd full of life and I like the lyrics as well it's just all about feeling good and not being down anymore and I think that's a wonderful message to send and the glamour is all about shining bright and not letting people's perceptions bring you down and I feel like the song and, and everything about me and my entrance really, really works for that. Yeah, yeah. definitely. If you That's had to go... Answer. I love that answer, by the way. That's brilliant. Yeah. I, like, I like that you're essentially essentially tricking people a little bit. Like, oh, here comes a pretty pretty pink princess and you come out and kick someone's ass. Exactly. Like, I exactly. love that. That's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> 
if you had to go full full heel, I'm talking real bottom of the battle heel. What would you change your perception? Would you change your look? I would. I would flip some things. I think. Um, I feel like when you turn heel, you don't necessarily have to become a whole new character. Yeah. It's all about just swapping things around like when I do things they mean something whereas if I do those same things they might mean something else it depends how I mm. how I do them really because yeah. um, when you look at people in the past you know some of your best heels and baby faces they kind of do the same stuff they just become different in the way that they do it uh, I think I would change the song though just because the song is far too far too like <laughs> upbeat and wholesome I'm so uh, happy I... <laughs> and got no tears out to cry <laughs> bitch <laughs> You know, <laughs> but then I guess that could work really well. That would be quite a funny. It would, yeah. Just put that in, uh, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, a really um, good point. I think when when people think of turning heel, you're like, oh, okay, so they're going to start wearing black. They're going to start cheating. The women are going to wear more makeup. But it's just it's a bit of like um, it's an yeah. old played out. Yeah, trope, I don't. Isn't it, that, yeah, you know. I don't think it works. I mean, I think Pete Dunn said there's not really heels and faces anymore. You're you're a character. Yep. And then the crowd are going to perceive you how they want. And there are things you can do, very subtle things you do that make you the bad guy and make them the good guy, whether it's just the way the match is put together or you might have a certain thing that you do. I mean, because there are like, you know, there are people who have the same taunts all the time, but when they're a heel, they get a boo. And when they're a baby face, they get a cheer. They don't change their mm. taunt to start swearing at people or, you know, doing that really stereotypical like heel stuff that I see quite a lot. And that's my worst when people come out and they immediately like swear and you're like great like cool we get it like you can swear uh so like for me i wouldn't necessarily like have a complete character reform but i would just change certain things around but i would probably change the song i do have a song that i would use as a heel but i don't want to say yet no in that's case fine. I do okay get Super. to use it down the line you never know so um but it's funny because the song is like a darker version of the one I currently use just structurally it has like the epic intro and then it just has the drop but it's just more of like a bass rather than picking it up picking it up you, know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you were right there though about especially with the, uh, the what Pete Dunn said because I mean if you look at Mania's main event at the moment the reason why like Daniel Bryan has been thrown right into that match is because they know Roman's going to get cheered they know for a fact Roman's going to get you, even though he's the biggest heel on the roster, he's going to get cheered. Mm -hmm. And Edge has had to go full, full heel just just to balance that out. So it, it does make yeah. perfect sense. As you said, there is no face and heel in terms of the good yeah. guy and the bad guy anymore. Yeah. Take You're lucky you if you get that. You know, like you remember uh, Eva Marie. Like yeah. people would say, like, I mean, I think it was like Kevin Owens or something in an interview, like, yeah, I'd kill for that heat because, like, she was just hated. Yeah. You know, and the reason people hate her is because, yep. like, oh, she's a model, like, she can't wrestle, or, like, she doesn't care, she doesn't love it. Blah, blah. You know, that typical, like, you know, kind of entitlement, and, and, and that's why she was so hated. It's like the way that wrestling is digested now is completely different. Yeah. With kids, what, you know, you will get the face value, like, they will just really like, you know, the bubbly, what charismatic. Yeah, you know, your Jeff Hardy, your Liv Morgan, your Mickey James, you know, they will love them. And they will just like, you know, your Nia Jax who comes out and she's, you know, very like stern and, you know, and, and that works for them. But with adults, they're like, wait, what if we were like different? <laughs> what if we like, <laughs> wait, what if we like cheered Roman Reigns right now? Like how fucking random would that be? <laughs> so, you know, and I do get it because, you know, what an adult like, likes a child doesn't you know when you were a kid you'd never like the same films as your parents so but i think that's an amazing dynamic that like kids probably hate roman reigns but yeah. now like adults love him but rewind to like you know when he won the rumble wrestlemania etc you know he was a you know baby face through and through and like adults weren't really feeling him uh well at least like a, a large majority on the internet but kids would have loved him like yeah. roman reigns i mean i I love Roman Reigns. I love Roman Reigns. But, you know, I think he's a phenomenal worker. He's brilliant. And his character stuff has been amazing. But, you know, like for a lot of adults, they just rejected it because they felt like that's what they were given. They're like, no, nope, we don't want this because we feel like you're giving us this. So, but I do think it's amazing that, you know, someone can be so over and be hated by one portion of people and loved by another portion. I think that's, yeah. that's a really interesting concept in how wrestling's evolving and changing and how like WWE and I mean, I don't think AEW have had to learn it too much yet no. because they're, they're, you know, like the, in the internet fans love AEW, but I think, you know, down the line, it's just like the way wrestling's evolving and learning to adapt to that and try and make it work uh, is very interesting to see. And I think that's what Pete Dunn meant in the fact of like, you just have to be a character. 
Yeah. And the crowd might love yeah. you or hate you. You just have to figure out what that is, how that works, how you are in stories, how you are, and then just see how they react to you because it could be different every time, you know? Yeah, the person who's... Look at yeah, I was just about to say, the person who's literally read it? that line of being absolutely loved to absolutely hated to, again, now being loved. He, he has gone through that whole river of it, yeah. hasn't he? Yeah. yeah and yet he's never, he's never changed anything. He's never no. played up no. to it. He's just been... Him. I'm John Cena. Take me how you want me. Yeah. Yeah. But he gets... Because I, mean, I think it's about reaction. Like, you never want to come out and it be silent. Yeah. And so for John Cena, like, he comes out and he gets cheered, he gets booed, he gets the John Cena sucks, let's go Cena. But it's his name that's being chanted. And, like, you know, all yeah. the kids are wearing the John Cena shirts. I mean, I've got John Cena shirts. Like, I love John Cena. And, uh, you know, so he's hitting that massive demographic, which is so important for a family company. But then for adults, like, they have so much fun booing him. And he yeah. just embraces it and he kind of works to it, um, which is so, so important. So, uh, yeah, that's a great, great example of how you've kind of slowly watched wrestling change and become very hot and cold. Yeah, really. Depending on yeah. the year. Another really good ones, Eddie Eddie Guerrero as well, because he sort of was just always Eddie Guerrero, but then mm. he'd play he'd play the face and he'd be this fun, loving, happy, cheeky chappy. But then he'd do things like you know, like removing his boot and mm. and the fake chair shot and things like that. That's why yeah. I loved Eddie Guerrero so much because yeah. he was just you never you never quite knew you never knew what you were going to get. <laughs> you never knew. And yeah, I and I think that's. Like that. But I like that. Like I like when someone especially like when they're a heel and they have kind of their their tendencies or they cheat in a certain way but then when they kind of slowly turn into a baby face they still do that thing but it's like charming still you don't yeah. boo them it's weird like they're, they're like yeah. kind of cheating not 100 percent, but they're kind of cheating but you're like yeah you <laughs> i'm okay you, with you're, that you like condition <laughs> you're conditioned to just like love that and you just love that yeah. about them and that's their quirk and that's their personality so um yeah i really think now it's kind of about like establishing a character and and what you do and who you are and then like you say that's what fans will stick to and you know you might not ever know what you're getting but as long as you're that character that's what's important exactly yeah. exactly Absolutely. um obviously we're, we're all based in the uk um and we've suffered a lot from from this pandemic, as everyone else has. Um, as an independent wrestler, how have you coped during the pandemic and lockdown one, two, and three? Uh, we've seen promotions start back up in recent months, with a lot of them set to start up in in May or June. Obviously, when the restrictions, fingers crossed, can be completely removed, uh, you must be itching to get back out to competing. Uh, and what's it been like through these entire lockdown? Actually, I know you've had Twitch and stuff, but from a wrestling perspective, what's it been like? Yeah, it was really tough because, uh, you know, like for me at the start of, honestly, trying to think of the years now, 2020, this is yeah, crazy. We've been crazy, in cyber ways alone. Where did March go? Where did March go? <laughs> <laughs> what's happening? <laughs> uh, but like for me, the start of 2020, like I was booked every weekend and just getting those reps in and I did like the all-star run. So like wrestled for like nine days in a row and I was really just getting to grips with it and just repetition is what you need. You need experience, you need to get out, you need to learn. And, you know, I was starting to get a lot of big opportunities. And of course I was working every weekend. I was going to wrestle internationally. I had some things in, down the line and like to kind of just watch it all like slowly just disappear was really really tough but the thing is is they will still be there like everyone's been put on hold you're not just an individual that's been you know trapped like we're all going through this and, and we've all had to kind of had that element of things put on hold and they'll be there you know I've stayed in contact with people and I've kind of made sure that you know I, I can kind of revisit these things when when it's safe to do so um, but for me, like with lockdown, like I'm a very busy person and if I'm not working and I don't feel like I'm moving forward towards my goals, I really suffer. So like for me, I've just been working out a lot. I've been, the reason I started with YouTube and Twitch was just to build a brand, yeah. just to help build that following, was to communicate with my fans because I think that's a really unique point as an independent wrestler to have established such a brand and and such like a, an online presence I think is really really important you are a business mm -hmm. you know yeah okay yeah. you're a wrestler you're following your dreams but you're a business and when you go to another business uh, whether it be a bigger company to get signed or or independence to work for them you want to sell them something so you can get something in return that that's how it works you're collaborating and um you know that's why when we talked about other people starting twitch i'm like it's a good thing you know you want people need to become aware of the fact they are a business and they have worth and they need to build that um so for me it was just about how can i build my business how can i build my brand and um 
of course, on the more specific wrestling sides. I've been practicing promos. I've been working out. I actually live with my partner who's a wrestler. So we've kind of been doing some mat-based stuff. We don't have a ring, but we do have some mats. So we've kind of just been been wrestling around and just trying to stay in touch with it and, and studying a lot of wrestling. So I've just been keeping it all rolling and just trying to work on what I can. And that's just building my brand and making my business worth as much as possible. So when opportunities open back up, I can... I can make a name for myself with them. Yeah, I mean, we've had Shane yeah. Taylor promotions on uh, from Ring of Honor, and I think that that's literally what Shane was pushing, wasn't it? Is was that it's not people just think it, it's what happens in the ring. It's not you need mm. to build yourself so much, and we have so many services available like YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, in which you can present yourself, and you need to interact with those people in order to get that fan base on your side. So, you know, you can go that next level and that next level. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah, like, look, at, look at the people that WWE signed to the performance center. It's, it's not very often that they're complete unknowns. You know, they've, mm. they've either come from smaller companies or they're known on YouTube. Um, what's his, what's his name? The new guy, um, Parker Bordreau, the guy who looks like mm. Brock Lesnar. Like he's huge on Twitter and he's never wrestled before. As, as far mm. as I know, he's never wrestled I've before. Never he's, he's, yeah. he's played he's football, but he's got like a hundred thousand followers and he's a verified account. So they, they know they've already got a sort yeah. of minor celebrity straight yeah. away. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also someone with the ability to, I don't get over i guess but yeah. someone with the ability yeah. to essentially make you money really and, yes. and collaborate with you and they're going to be good to work with um, and well. i think yeah. you just have to look at it like that um you know like there's a wholesomeness to you know like i said oh just starting to wrestle and having my debut and you know that's all very special but you are a business and you do need to work for that you need to train that hard you need to look at things from you know outside of training and practicing promos and wrestling how can you build that brand? You need to network. You need to get in contact with people from different countries, different promotions. You need to really be able to sell them something so they can give you something because they're going to give you an opportunity to have exposure to their whole audience. Yeah. To what you're going to bring to them, yeah. you know, and I think uh, a lot of people need to kind of just become aware of that and just become like you are a business. Definitely. You know? Definitely. And that's why you're on here. So thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to do loads, loads for you. <laughs> hey, we had Eric Bischoff on. We had Eric Bischoff on. To be thank fair. you very much. Do you know to what I mean? We did. The only UK fair one enough. to have him on. Fair enough. I love that. Let's see. Um, <laughs> right, let's move on. Right, so we're going to move on to our quick fire round. This is still fairly new. We've only done it a few times. Um, we're going to go back and forth. Me faz, me faz. About 10 or so questions. Um, nothing too bad. Nothing too taxing. Just the first thing that comes to your head. We will stop and we will probably laugh at you if there's anything embarrassing in there. But that's, <laughs> oh, that's, that's, that's part of the fun. There's nothing I'm too nervous. bad though, honestly. honestly. <laughs> right, so I will start. <clears throat> First quick fire question. Favourite word? <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> and you can swear, yeah, swearing's fine. <laughs> no, um, yeah. 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 I like that. It, yeah. I was mocking. No, I, do we? I don't even have to explain why I do it because it's quick fire. Exactly. Exactly. So uh, I have to give you guys a reason for that weird <laughs> word. That I'll say time. Uh, most used emoji. Love heart. Pink one. Uh, you can only eat one meal for the rest of your life. What is it? Um, hamburger. Because I love them right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> so shit. <laughs> <laughs> what was the general feeling of the last text you sent? Positive, negative. Wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, wake up. <laughs> uh, where is your happy place? Oh, uh, sitting in the sun and being around my family. Nice. Uh, working out or at home watching Netflix? Working out. Every wrestler that we have on always says working out. Yeah, no. It's a lifestyle. Yeah, isn't it? We all just want to watch Netflix. No, but I, I feel like I mean these are quick fires. So I'm not really allowed to. Explain, no, but I just... not yet. <laughs> I, can't, I can't tell you guys. Sorry, I can't give you the secrets. So, right, this is this is one that we're keeping a running total of. Uh, the Rock or Stone Cold Steve Austin? Ah, The Rock. Yeah. <laughs> That was so tough. That's Every like five nil. Person. That's like five Every nil for the rock. Single now. person, I love it. Uh, <laughs> describe AW in three words. Amazing opportunity, revolutionary. Okay. Uh, SummerSlam or Royal Rumble? Royal Rumble. 
it took me like 10 whole seconds to just even <laughs> listen to what you said I'm like, Wait, what? <laughs> I'm so nervous. three words to describe yourself um strong funny pink <laughs> i've got go. one more i've got one more that i'm throwing in as a bonus one along the lines of rock or austin trish or mickey i've got to leave i'm not i'm not gonna answer <laughs> these questions right now okay speak to my agent <laughs> oh, uh, i knew this would be a tough one see you did this to yourself after the question <laughs> um trish yeah yeah you did say she was the greatest of all time so that, that's fair enough that is fair enough. Well What's done. That? See, that was it. That was all right, wasn't it? I can't uh, go back to bed. I can't... <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? That's all you're thinking done for the day. <laughs> so uh, what we like to do is is obviously leave it on, on a question that's kind of open-ended, but uh, what's next for uh, Mariah May in 2021, 2022? Lots of exciting things. Um, I can't say too much already, but um, what I can say is like, I'm, um, very busy so you'll be seeing me a lot on the independence uh internationally and hopefully some some big things down the line maybe next year it just really depends on on covid mm -hmm. uh, yeah. but definitely some really exciting stuff excellent excellent what's next for twitch awesome. youtube what are you looking to do on those have you got any new videos just, ideas coming out oh lots <laughs> all the time <laughs> uh yeah i always have two videos a week on youtube and it's a range of different stuff from gaming to wrestling content to Q and A's to getting to know me. And uh, yeah, with Twitch, I'm on there five days a week and just continuing to just build the community and, and build those channels and, and continue to grow. You're going to try and keep doing that. Obviously, I know five days a week is going to be a bit tough, isn't it, when you're traveling and yeah. stuff again, but are you going to try and stick uh, to a schedule? I'll definitely, yeah, I'll definitely keep it because when I, on YouTube, I used to vlog um, my wrestling weekend. So kind of like an on the road vlog. Uh, so that will always be there and then of course i do enjoy making other content and i feel like that's easy enough to keep up with like i was doing that before twitch is a bit different um because as well like i stream uh friday saturday sunday at the moment too so obviously with wrestling normally you're working on friday saturday and sunday like at least the dates i've got already are like <laughs> already, you know. uh, so i'm thinking i'll probably just do like a couple of days like maybe three four days in the week Excellent. um I really enjoy it and it's not something I want to lose so I'll definitely continue to do it but it would just be during the week yep, so, yeah definitely so head on over there and definitely follow subscribe do all that stuff uh Mariah May is absolutely fantastic and you know we absolutely love to spend in here Sunday with us uh is there anything oh. you want to plug social media wise before we say goodbye oh um all my socials are Mariah May X I'm on YouTube Twitch Twitter Instagram TikTok now because apparently that's the new thing so yeah. here I am learning dances we, we, so, we, tried it. we, we don't use it we tried it we weren't <laughs> very good at it <laughs> of my window as well because like i've got a really big window and then like at the front of my house so i'm like doing all this like in the window and i can see people going <laughs> and just like <laughs> stopping outside and i'm there is she like... okay <laughs> <laughs> and the answer is no i'm not <laughs> i'm just trying to keep up with the kids because this is what it's all about now um you know it's like one of the fastest growing platforms so i'm like i need to just mm. get in there but i'm trying to do stuff that i enjoy uh, but it's a lot of fun on tiktok too so if you're, you can follow me on there if you want but yeah Excellent, excellent. And you head on over to my Twitter, it's at Fazas Thoughts, that's F A Z Z A S Thoughts, and Mr. D's. Yeah, at PWCDs, and you can find us literally everywhere at It's Our House Pod. Yeah, and on Twitch, it's It's Our House Pod Gaming, I O H Pod oh, yes. Gaming. So head on over there and give us a follow. We're hopefully going to do it every Thursday ourselves, but probably not because we don't really <laughs> care that much about it at the moment. But we will, we promise, we will, we will, we will. Uh, download us on all podcast platforms, subscribe to us, and we shall see you all in the next one. Take it easy, folks. <laughs>